Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be working on a bunch of rose maintenance. So deadheading, some light summer pruning, and fertilizing. We did recently put up a video where I did flower bed maintenance in general, perennial cutback. I did some rose deadheading in that, fertilizing, but I didn't really get any good close-up shots or talk through the process, so that's what I want to do today. And we're going to talk through much of the process here in the shade because it is 96 degrees out and it's quite lovely right here underneath the shade of this locust tree. So deadheading first, which is basically just removing spent blooms. Very simple concept, but it's really important to do, especially on those types of roses that you want to have rebloom throughout the season. If you don't remove those spent blooms, the plant will send a tremendous amount of energy to those blooms trying to create seed, or in this case, they're called rose hips. There are exceptions to everything though. I do have a variety of rose called Morden Blush pale pink, gorgeous. If I deadheaded them after their first flush of blooms, they would bloom again in the season. But they, uh, if you don't deadhead them, they create the most gorgeous, huge orangish red rose hips that I like to use in fall and winter decorating and arrangements. So there are those exceptions where you figure out which ones form up the most beautiful hips. And we want that interest in our garden sometimes, but most of the time we want a deadhead so that it cleans up the look of our plant and it creates more blooms for the season. It's also a really good time to address any shape issues and alleviating any extra growth that is impeding the light's ability to reach the center of the plant. Um, we want there to be good airflow and good light reaching all of the plant to keep the plant healthy. There are two different types of roses you'll most likely be looking at to deadhead. There are the types that produce a bloom on a single stem, usually uh, found in the hybrid tea category of rose. And then there are types of roses that produce clusters of blooms, like a bunch of roses on the top of a single stem. Um, those you most often find in like Floribunda or Grandiflora, maybe shrub rose category. For the cluster type roses, they don't all start blooming at the same time. So as blooms start to fade in that cluster, we'll just remove individual blooms. And to do that, you just go right immediately below that bloom and cut the bloom out right where it attaches to the rest of that group of flowers. And you'll continue doing that until the entire stem is done. When that cluster's done, you'll remove the whole stem. Um, there are a few things to look for when you're doing this. The first thing is that you want to cut that stem above a set of five leaves. And it's important to to do that because if you were to make your cut higher because oftentimes you'll find sets of three leaves or maybe like one leaf up higher if you do that it will most likely produce growth that won't actually produce another bloom for you. So you wanna find that set of five leaves. The next thing is you wanna make sure that that set of five leaves that you're gonna cut above has an outward facing bud. And what that means is if you find your first set of five leaves and it's cruising toward the inner part of your shrub, if you make your cut above that set of five leaves, that's the direction that the new growth is gonna go. It's gonna also grow toward the center of your plant. And you don't wanna encourage that. You wanna encourage outward growth so that the center stays more open. So if that means you need to go down further on that stem and find a set of leaves that's facing outward, that's what you wanna do. And the last thing is that you don't need to necessarily cut above the very first set of five leaves that you find. Because a lot of times roses will throw out really long canes that don't match the growth habit of the rest of your plant. So this is a really good time to make shape cuts so that you keep a nice tidy compact nice looking plant um, so if that means you need to go down several sets of five leaves so that it meets the rest of the leaf canopy of your plant you can absolutely do that it's a great time and that kind of falls under the light pruning light summer pruning category so when you're ready to make your cut there are kind of two schools of thought I grew up thinking you need to make slanted cuts on your rose uh, because it facilitates water drainage so that the water won't sit on top of a straight cut and enter the plant and then there are other people I've talked growers in the industry that prefer straight cuts because it opens up less surface area for any bacteria to end up in. They both kind of make sense. So whatever camp you fall in, uh, you want to make your cut about a quarter inch or so above that set of five leaves. So that's what you do with cluster type roses. You do your individual deadheading first until the cluster is done. And then once the cluster is done, you take the whole stem out. For your single stem type roses, your hybrid teas, you follow the exact same method except for you only have the one flower to deal with. So when the one flower fades, then you follow it down to the first set of five leaves that has an outward facing bud, unless you need to make a shaping cut, which requires a lower cut uh, on that stem possibly. So that's basically what I'm gonna be working on this afternoon. All of our roses are pretty much in the full sun. So I'm just gonna set up a camera and try to get through as many as I can. When I'm dead, dead deadheading each one of the roses, I am gonna fertilize. So we use a Spoma Rose Tone. It works really well. Our roses are, are having an especially good year this year. They're doing super great. Um, it could be because we had a cooler 
cooler summer, but they're just all looking so just lush. I'm loving it, but I do think fertilizer helps. Now, the instructions say that you can do it monthly from May through September. I'm lucky if I get two applications done. So we typically do one in late spring, one midsummer when I go through and do my major deadhead overhaul. I don't keep up on deadheading like all the time, but we try to do as much as we can. A couple of quick side notes before we get started because I almost forgot to mention them. You might find that some of your roses have leaf sets with a higher number of leaves than just five. So like this one right here from one of my rose bushes has nine. This one has seven. The point is just to make sure you're making your cuts above a set with at least five. That's uh, kind of the minimum there. And there are some roses that you don't necessarily have to deadhead at all. Um, there are some climbing roses that only bloom once. There are some shrub root roses that only bloom one time. And in that case, if you're not, if you know that that variety is not going to produce more blooms for the season, it's kind of a, an aesthetic thing. Uh, if you want to deadhead them just to tidy up the plant, you can do that. You can leave the blooms and let them form hips instead. Um, and then there are some types of, of roses, like some landscape and shrub type roses, like I've got oh so easy Italian ice. I have the oh so easy peachy cream. Um, there are newer varieties that have been bred to where you don't have to deadhead them all, at all and that doesn't uh, impede their ability to bloom later on in the season. They'll just keep blooming. You can deadhead them if you want um, just to make them look nice but they will keep blooming regardless. Okay now let's go get started. All right, guys, it has been several days. I actually worked on the deadheading over this past holiday weekend. It's 4th of July weekend, and we took a couple days off from posting, which we don't normally do, but we just thought it's supposed to be fairly nice this weekend and we wanted to enjoy it with family and we did a lot of family stuff which was awesome but then I came out and just uh, snuck in some deadheading here and there as I had a chance to. I did want to show you these Morden Blush roses though because I did mention I think in the beginning that I like to leave these. I don't deadhead these because they form up the best rose hips. Point of reference there's Hebe right there. We did have quite a bit of wind. Look at all the leaves on the ground. And then right here we have the Morden Blush Roses. There are three here. So one, two, three. There's a Hawthorne right above. And you guys, these just form up the best hips. So right underneath where the spent bloom is, you can kind of see that right there. That is the rose hip or the seed pod that the rose plant is trying to form up or is forming up. Sending a lot of energy into these because you can see there are just tons of them. They're all over. And they usually form up about three to four times this size by the time they're done by the end of the season. And they turn a bright red orange and then these hawthorn berries are bright red. It's a really pretty scene in the fall. And I find that just leaving three shrubs really, I mean with the amount of flowers that these put out, 
is plenty for the amount of arrangements that I like to put together with them. So the petals just kind of dry up and fall off on their own. We get enough wind that they usually clean themselves up pretty, pretty well. Uh, and then we're left with kind of this star shape. It's kind of an interesting look, really. Hey, Russell. I do have some perennial maintenance to do in this area as well. I've got some salvia to cut back. I did squeeze in some salvia cut back in a few of the other areas I was in, and I do have some roses left to deadhead. And it's just one of those things that's ongoing throughout the season. You just, if you want your rose plants to look really cleaned up all the time, or if you really want to um, have them be the most productive, then you keep up on it all the time. I find that I come out in uh, every once in a while, like every few weeks we come out and do just a kind of massive deadheading and get them all done and then let them go for a little while longer, which means that there are spent blooms hanging out on the plant for a while before we get to it. And I think that's kind of normal, maybe. <laughs> And that is going to be it for rose deadheading. I hope this video was helpful, especially to those of you guys who might just be starting out, um, just got your first rose bush and you're wondering how to deadhead and kind of stressed out about maybe doing something wrong. And really, there's not a whole lot you can do wrong. Um, you, you know, I've done a lot of things to where I learn from it. You might hamper the bloom production for one season, um, but usually you kind of figure out along the way what you did and how to do it differently. I've done that quite a bit in the garden. So I hope that uh, the close-up shot were helpful just to see where we cut and why we do that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one.